All right, let's talk a little bit about the Justice Justice League movie, um, the Snyder Cut, and uh, we'll be doing a live stream tomorrow. I'm probably going to do it on Lion Killer Podcast, so check that channel out. Um, probably do it over there, but speak my piece. He a little bit more informative on the whole comic, but the first thing that stood out to anybody that watched the movie that should have stood out is when you went, if you watched it on HBO Max, it was kind of in a 4-3 format, you know, which is, you know, you guys, you know, if you look at, um, if you put an old, older movie, like seven, 2007, 2000, and they remastered it into HD, it's like this much of the screen, not this much of the screen. How you see it now, it's about this much of the screen. That kind of bothered me at first, you know, but it said that basically to respect the integrity of, you know, the movie. And people saying, well, it's the same movie, it's the same movie. How can a two-hour movie and a four-hour movie be the same movie? It's a director cut. So if you watch the beginning of the movie, the very beginning, it's totally different from the beginning to a certain extent. The beginning of Justice League, you know, see people on the streets and Batman fighting, boo, boo, boo. And this one, it, it starts off a lot different, you know. Um, I, I would say the biggest difference in the movie that stood out to me was Steppenwolf. Check out our movie review playlist too. Stephen Wolf was remastered, look good. And they should have remastered him from the beginning. Alright? Shouldn't have went out there like that in the first one. Look at the first Stephen Wolf in this one. You can look it on Google. He way better than this one. You know? And I think that was the one of the they said that's one of the biggest endeavors for them to move forward with the Snyder Cut. And if you don't know the difference between the Snyder Cut and the regular one, it's just not two to four hours. The difference was Snyder was in the middle of doing the original Justice League when his stepdaughter committed suicide. So they went to go get one of the, the directors that did the that did the that did the, some of the adventure movies. And they wanted it to be more light, more funny, more comical, more jokes. And really when you look at the characters, maybe Barry Allen is probably has the most charisma. Like you probably could put him into his story. Into the just, I mean, to the to Marvel, to Marvel Studios and Avengers, he fit right in. He's the only one besides, you know, the Joker who did make an appearance in the movie. He's the only one that's really, to me, got the one-liners, you know. And then they didn't have uh, Green Lantern in this one either, so he's the only one that really had the one-liners. So the other guy's depiction, this two-hour movie, was basically trying, you know, to fit his vision into with the Snyder cut. Uh, with some of the Snyder, what he already done. But that's not Marvel. DC is loved and respected because of the darkness and the goriness. You know, and the difference was they probably want to keep up with the Avengers because the Avengers is probably PG-13. And the if you have a, 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 a PG-13 or a G-rated movie, you get the whole family go. You're probably going to do more tickets. But that's not DC. DC is dark, gory. That's what DC is. And if you notice... The reason this movie was four hours long, if you didn't notice, is because they didn't do what the Avengers did. Captain Sol Captain America, Winter Soldier, you know, Civil War, Iron Man, one, two, whatever it was. Uh, who else you got there that's in there? Um, uh, I don't can't remember none of them. Spider-Man movies. You notice. There is a build-up. Even, even when you see them building up and they... Iron Man, Blase Blah, Age of Ultron. Go back. Blah, say, blah. Blah, say, blah. Bam. They didn't do it the right way. DC. You know, and this movie kind of gave you... You've seen Batman. You know Batman. You know Superman. This takes a place a few years after Superman kills Zod. All right? You know Superman. You, Wonder Woman. They did it right. They built Wonder Woman up to this point. Then you look at it. Barry Allen. Flash. He got his own TV show. But I think he needed a movie. I think Cyborg needed a movie, and um, Aquaman had a movie, but really it was focusing on, you know, this Snyder Cut a lot too, focusing a little, little bit more on, on Cyborg, you know, his football scene, his ATM scene, and then also they had to take some time to figure out on Barry Allen and his love, his life, I forget her name, forget her name in the comics and on the show. Her save, him going to apply for a job, saving her life from a car accident, you know. So that little bit by little bit, it gave. But then they had some of the same scenes in it. The bank, the bank scene with the terrorists and Wonder Woman, um, the Wonder Woman scene with the uh, Amazon scene where you know 
Stephen Wolf go take the box from them. So, and then obviously people seen the Superman scene where, you know, that was in there where he was beating up the other fellow members of the Justice League and got the Batman. But, um, you know, it was more informative. It explained the movie a lot more than a two-hour movie because they didn't have no way to build up to the movie with more characters. So you found out about Aquaman. You found out a little bit about Barry Allen, his father visiting him at the prison. And, um, you know, and, and also it, it looked a little bit better. The goons looked a little bit better, whatever the little things. I was with uh, Stephen Wolf. And then, and then, because I got to watch it again. And I'll probably give another review again. Probably tomorrow. Obviously, we might be online. Kill a podcast tomorrow. But then the other, the other huge thing about the movie, um, after bringing Superman, when they battled, uh, when they battled Stephen Wolf, it was a totally different ending to that movie. You remember? If you saw the movie, it was totally different because in the original Justice League, they beat Stephen Wolf. Stephen Wolf's vill his his villains, you know, eat him up and he shoot back into the light. In this situation, you know, I believe I believe the ending was different where old boy shot Barry Allen in the leg and, you know, he stopped, he couldn't get Cyborg the the the, the enough necessary energy to do what he had to do with that little cube. And then you see a situation where Barry Allen gotta heal itself and then Dark Side is about to come through and and wreck shit. Then Barry Allen get up. He ran as fast as he ever ran before. Excuse me, my neck is killing me. He ran as fast as he ever ran before. Turned down, turned back time enough, and where you know Dark Side had to go back. Cyborg did his thing, sent Dark Side back to where he come from, and um, and uh, you know from there they shut the hole and they defeat Stephen Wolf. Superman freezes, you know Superman come back, freezes little sword, and Wonder Woman do the honors and they defeated him. You know, and you know, you see it. Then you see towards the it was a, the end is pretty long too. Homeboy told Darkseid that I told you that Stephen Wolf would fail, and you know, you didn't tell me, and we had to find another way to come. So they coming back because you had Marsh and the Manhunter at the end, of, at the end, sort of towards the end, because it's a long end. He comes in, and he basically tells, you know, he basically tells, you know, find Batman, Bruce Wayne, and tell him that you know Darkseid coming back, and you know, we got to be prepared for it. Um, and, and the ending was dope. It, and the original ending was trash. Send them back up. You see Dark Side because you know Dark Side comes back. And they got a couple movies that they're going to flip. If you seen the end of the original one, they had Deathstroke. And you see the end of the original one, Luther, Lex Luther break out of the insane asylum. Goes, you know, Gale goes back to his life. Tell Deathstroke that Batman Bruce Wayne, you know, Deathstroke's, you know, basically. His arch enemy in the comics, it ain't Batman, it's Nightwing, you know. The original Wild Robin, but Deathstroke owns Batman in the comics. And Batman got a sneak attack or got to get help to beat Deathstroke, which Deathstroke has superhuman, superhuman powers. So one, you you can get three movies, you can get a couple movies out of this scenario. Three movies out of this scenario. One, Batman, Bell, and Deathstroke. I haven't seen that movie yet. So that's a good movie. Because then you got... If they get deep into it or do it in in a trilogy or two movies, he got issues with Nightwing, the original Robin. So, you know, so that whole backstory, they can give Deathstroke his own mini mo own movie, how you lead into Batman and Nightwing and all that. Then you got a situation where, you know, another Justice League movie, Darkseid coming through. He find they find an alternate way to come back to Earth and March and the Manhunter warn Batman, Bruce Wayne. Then, if you look at the very end of this original movie, and that was a different one too, the very end original movie, they're going into the Justice League cartoon in a timeline where Superman, I think, turns evil. You know what I'm saying? And they all got to find a way to take Superman out. And, you know, a number of people had died. Lois Lane died. Harley Quinn died. So I forget the name of that Justice League movie. And if they follow that movie, that's going to be another dope movie. So you could get three movies in that DC universe that if they do it right, especially. Especially the timeline when Superman is evil and they got to find out a way to take Superman down. And Batman, the Joker, you know, there's a few other people there. That's a great timeline. Then also, look at those three movies, good movies. But then you also got a situation where, with Captain, well, not Captain America, what am I talking about? Um, you got a situation where Shazam, 
Shazam has a has a has a story where they can have a Shazam trilogy, which Shazam one was one of the best Marvel, you know, right side of Dark Batman. I think that was my favorite one out of this, you know, DC universe. They got a situation in where they can do the they supposed to do the Black Adam story. And then, you know, Shazam, Black Adam story. He was original Shazam where, you know, old boy sent him back into time. So he comes back. They're gonna give his his backstory. Then he comes back and he's looking for the new Shazam. All right. And Superman is helping, you know, Shazam fight Black Adam. If you see that cartoon, if they're able to depict that cartoon into a live action movie, that's probably going to be right under the Dark Knight. It's one of the best, you know, movies because also it's a lot of fighting. But really, really, Shazam is a kid. So they can kind of maybe keep that PG-13. But, if you know. That's another. So they got four. They have a few. They got the Marvel DC universe is shitting on the Marvel universe. They do it the right way, and you know to be honest, did Zack Snyder save his job as far as doing another um, DC universe? Yeah, but Batman vs Superman, I think he did. That was terrible. So the expectations for me for this movie was was here. You know, when your expectations low, the movie might be here in reality. But to me, it was up here. It was a great movie. I sat through the four hours. I watched it. I watched it in two parts. Watched about an hour and some change, an hour thirty. Had to go shoot some movies. Came back. Watched the next three hours. Um, so it was a good movie to me. I gave it like a seven, seven and a half. And when you watch it again, you start to know stuff you didn't see before. I probably say seven and a half, eight ish. Um, good movie. He saved his stuff, but still, maybe bring Christopher Nolan back for some of those movies. But the next, you know. The next movies they can come out with, as far as the the Black Adam Shazam and Superman situation, situation where you know Superman turned bad in a different timeline, where Bruce Wayne dreamed about it, and then oh, what was the other one with Darkseid coming back in DC? If done right, Marvel can't fuck with that. The kids will love Marvel, but the adults and the people with money is gonna love DC because it's dark and it's gory, and they got a situation where Marvel. Never was an Iron Man fan. All right. Um, Captain America, I love her movie. Her movie was good. But to be honest, none of messing with the Dark Knight. I love Shazam. You know, Winter Soldier, one of my favorite favorite, my favorite movies. But the next universe of DC is going gonna, gonna to be crazy. But you know they're going to bring back Iron Man with a time machine, Marvel. But good movie. I give about a seven and a half, eight. Exceeded my expectations. Um, Stephen Wolf was different. That was an upgrade, and it's, it was more informative. So, Justice League was two hours smashed in, original one. This one was more informative, better ending, better action. You know, liked it better. So, let me know what you guys think. Don't forget me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All my social media links in the description. Twitter is the best way than Facebook and Instagram. We also got a Facebook group that links there as well, too. Want to make a financial donation? Cash app CJ Good 313. That's in the description. PayPal link there as well, too. Best way to donate, share the video. Let me know what you think about the movie in the comment section. One time for the one time, we go.